In the United States, there are nearly 6,000 publicly traded stocks. Sorting your way through this can be overwhelming, but fortunately, we can sort these 6,000 stocks into 10 industry groups. This allows us to cluster stocks with similar business interests together. To create the perfect stock portfolio, diversification is important, and by selecting a few stocks from each sector, we are buying a little piece of every part of the American economy. In this video, I'll be explaining what the 10 major industry groupings are, what major stocks operate in each of them, and some investment tips and tricks for each sector. A whopping 90% of my audience is yet to subscribe. By subscribing, you're helping my content reach a wider audience, encouraging me to make more content just like this. First up, we have the energy sector. This covers all of the businesses involved in producing and supplying energy in the form of oil and gas, coal, and renewable energy. Energy is key to economic growth and development, and it powers most other industries. If you really think about it, without energy, basically we'd see the world come to a standstill. The sector tends to be highly competitive, dominated by large multinational companies with a global presence. They often have a diverse portfolio of energy assets, including oil and gas fields, refineries, power plants, and increasingly renewable energy projects. Jumping over into Stockopedia's screening tool, you can see that oil and gas dominates the list. 296, or roughly 5% of the 6,000 publicly listed stocks, are in the energy sector. These include ExxonMobil, Chevron, and ConocoPhillips, all of which have a market capitalization in excess of $100 billion. The largest non-oil and gas company in the list is First Solar, worth about $25 billion. The energy sector tends to be highly volatile, with its average annual returns either being nearer the top or near the bottom of the sector returns. With a large weighting towards oil and gas stocks, the sector's performance has a large dependence on the state of oil prices. In 2021 and 2022, the world experienced an energy crisis as oil prices spiked due to the post-pandemic economic boom and war tension in Europe. In 2024 to date, energy stocks are continuing to hold up well as oil prices remain steady. The sector also offers the potential for high dividends as energy companies reap the benefits of higher energy prices while costs remain stable. Other sectors, however, have no option but to pay the higher prices in such cases. The outlook for the energy sector is positive, with the global demand for energy continuing to rise as developing countries like India and China grow their economies. The transition to renewable energy sources is underway, but for the time being, oil and gas is here to stay. There will always be demand for all forms of energy to power all sectors in modern society. Second up, we have the basic materials sector. In its simplest form, materials refers to any business engaged in the discovery, development, and processing of raw materials. This includes the producers of chemicals, metals, paper, packaging, and construction materials. This sector is highly global and the success of the sector is highly based on the state of the economy. During an economic boom, there is a greater amount of economic activity related to the manufacturing and selling of goods. The basic materials sector is a derived demand of this growth, providing many of the essential production inputs. Roughly 4% or 263 of the 6,000 publicly traded stocks in America can be found in this industry. The larger names here are relatively unknown outside of the manufacturing sector. From the chemicals industry, we have Lind, Southern Copper from the metal sector, CRH from construction materials, and Ball operating within the packaging space. The materials sector has struggled in 2024, gaining just 4% as compared to the S&P 500, which is up 15% for the year. In recent years, the industry has hung around the mid-pack with solid, stable performance. The industry's performance is largely driven by economic performance. So if we see a tilt towards less favorable trading conditions, such as a recession, we should expect the sector to suffer as well. We do need to keep in mind that this is a very broad sector too, perhaps the broadest in this list, which makes the future performance difficult to pick. Copper, for example, has had a tight supply for several years now. With aging copper mines and decreasing iron ore quality in key producing nations, a pickup in demand could see prices increase due to tight supply. On the other hand, lithium doesn't have the same supply side issues that have seen many new entrants in recent years, potentially limiting the upside for such mining companies. So even within the mining subsector, it's hard to determine the market performance outlook. As we start to see rates drop on the back of strong economic signals, 
subsectors under the materials umbrella with strong supply and demand profiles should perform well over the coming years. Third up, we have the industrial sector. This is another diverse grouping that encompasses businesses that manufacture machinery, tools, and industrial products. It also includes aerospace and defense firms and others in the transportation sector. Like materials that we just saw, the performance of the sector is often tied to the state of the economy. When times are good, governments invest heavily into infrastructure projects requiring vast construction equipment. Businesses also invest in expansion plans and growing their capital base, all of which benefits the industrial sector. We can further divide the sector into two buckets. Long cycle firms are less sensitive to economic fluctuations due to long order lead times, such as aerospace firms. On the other hand, we have short cycle firms, which are more sensitive to current economic conditions, such as transportation companies. The largest 687 listed companies operate in the industrial sector, roughly 11% of the market. Many of these are household names, including Boeing, Honeywell, Caterpillar, General Electric, UPS, and Delta Airlines. The industrial sector is mainly a mid-pack performer, growing just 7.8% year-to-date in 2024. Over recent years, it has never been a top performer, nor the worst. It trickles along with the rest of the pack. In 11 of the last 15 years, it has underperformed relative to the S&P 500 index. Like the materials sector, industrial stocks are varied and there is a vast range of factors that affect each subsector differently. Boeing, for example, is affected by vastly different factors to Square and 3M. But we can broadly say that industrial stocks benefit from investments into infrastructure, construction, and the onshoring of manufacturing back to America. As a steady performer, industrials are a valuable form of diversification in a well-balanced portfolio. Our fourth industry is the utility sector. Here we look at all companies involved in the production and delivery of electricity, gas and water. These are typically large companies which can either operate across utility services or specialize in just one. Utility companies require significant infrastructure assets, however often carrying large debts on the balance sheets. This makes utility companies hypersensitive to changes in market interest rates. Utilities that succeed through economic downturns will likely continue to rank among the best investments for safety, generous income, and steady wealth building. As the second smallest industry in our list, it has just 107 listed companies in the sector. Electricity providers such as NextEra and Southern Co are the most valuable in this list. Sempra provides gas and electricity, while American Waterworks, to nobody's surprise, is the largest water utility provider. The largest gas provider is Atmos Energy. As you can see here, the utility sector is much like the energy sector, with their performance either near the top or near the bottom of the pack. As they deliver essential services, however, they are a favorite among dividend investors and those looking for safe stocks. During economic downturns, the demand for their services barely moves, and as costs remain unchanged, profits, and therefore dividends, continue to flow. During these economic downturns, interest rates drop, so the relative yields as compared to bonds and savings accounts becomes more attractive as well. With strong regulatory oversight and expensive maintenance and capital requirements, Debt is something to watch and higher interest rates burden such companies with large debt on the books. So if you are looking for boring but stable companies with potentially solid dividends, utility companies might be a good fit. Fifth up, we have the healthcare industry. There are four subsectors, including pharmaceuticals, biotech, healthcare providers, and healthcare equipment manufacturers. Positive trends influencing the healthcare sector include the aging population, people living longer with chronic diseases, obesity, technological advances, and personalized medicine. Basically, if people are getting sicker and living longer, the industry can make more money by providing healthcare services for a longer time. Negative factors could include a shift towards universal healthcare, uninsured patients, rising costs, and labor shortages in the sector. America, despite being the home of many healthcare companies, is one of the most lucrative markets with widespread health issues and a large private market. In total, there are 1,230 healthcare companies listed in the United States. Eli Lilly, Novo Nordisk, and Johnson & Johnson are among the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. United Health is the largest healthcare provider 
and Thermo Fisher is the largest healthcare equipment supplier. At the cutting edge of biotech is Vertex with a valuation of $126 billion. The healthcare industry is different to many other sectors, as like the utility sector, it doesn't get affected as much by the state of the economy. Roughly half of the time it beats the S&P 500, and the other half it sees a lower return. With constant innovation in the sector, the landscape is constantly shifting. Over the past five years, Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk have grown 700 and 500% respectively. Their weight loss drugs have created excitement in the industry, opening up new market opportunities. While these two examples have excelled, it has come at the expense of other healthcare companies with competing equipment and pharmaceuticals. So the healthcare sector can offer a combination of defensive and growth characteristics, making it attractive in various market scenarios. However, the focus remains on investing in the most innovative areas of healthcare, where research insights can deliver material value over time. Sixth, we have the financial sector. These companies are responsible for providing various financial products and services to businesses and consumers, making the sector an integral component of the global economy. We can break the sector into three subsectors. First, you have banks, both global and regional, that are involved in traditional banking activities, such as lending, borrowing, and providing consumer banking services. Second, you have insurance, which includes companies that provide protection against risks and unfortunate events. And third, you have diversified financials. This includes payment processes, investment banks, real estate trusts, among many others. There are a whopping 1,613 listed financial companies in the United States, or just over 27% of the listed companies. At the top of the list, we have three mega banks, including JP Morgan, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. You also have the financial technology firm Intuit and investment banks Citi and Morgan Stanley. In the insurance space, we have Marsh, and from the real estate side, there's Prologis. As a whole, the financial sector tends to do pretty well year after year, beating the S&P 500 more often than not over the past 15 years. This year, it's up over 10% year to date, so it plays an important part in a diversified investment portfolio. Like a few of the other sectors that we've already looked at, the health of the financial sector is tied to the general economy. When it does well, financials do too. Some of the factors to watch include interest rate movements, economic cycles, regulatory changes, and house foreclosures. For the insurance companies, even natural disaster activity can be important. While the financial sector was heavily impacted during the global financial crisis in 2008, it has undergone significant restructuring and regulatory reforms, resulting in a stronger and more resilient industry. As the global economy continues to grow, the financial services sector is expected to play a crucial role in facilitating economic growth and providing essential financial services to people and businesses all over the world. For investors, the profits from the sector can offer great dividends as well. Seventh up, we have the consumer discretionary industry. This sector covers all companies that produce goods and services considered non-essential but desirable if consumers have disposable income. In other words, they supply wants and not needs. So it includes luxury goods, cars, entertainment, tourism, anything that we spend on for fun. The demand for such goods and services is highly elastic, so watch out for downturns in the economy or consumer confidence levels. When the economy is doing well, people have more money and they're a lot more willing to spend it with companies operating in this industry. There are currently 744 listed companies in the consumer discretionary industry, or one in eight listed businesses. On top of the list, from the retail sector, we have Amazon and Costco, of course. In the more specialty retail space, we have Tesla and Toyota, at Home Depot, McDonald's, Disney, Nike, Booking.com, among many other household names, also feature here. Over the past 15 years, the American economy surged, with the sector being among the top performing in 9 of the past 15 years. As for its investment potential, the sector offers investors high returns when the economy is strong and consumer spending is robust. However, it is highly cyclical, and when the economy goes south, it drags the sector down with it. Alongside that, you have many other risks to consider, including supply chain disruption, labor shortages, and rising input costs. Companies that survive must have a strong brand, 
of robust balance sheets and be able to quickly adapt to changing consumer preferences. Kodak was once in this list among the largest companies on earth. They missed that final part of adapting with consumer preferences. Within the sector, investors should also diversify into the broad range of businesses on offer across all kinds of retail and service sectors. Overall, the consumer discretionary sector offers exposure to companies that cater to consumer desires and preferences, with the potential for growth during periods of economic prosperity and consumer confidence. In eighth, we have the opposite of consumer discretionary. We have consumer staples. These are the companies that produce the essential goods and services that consumers rely on for everyday necessities regardless of what the economic conditions are. Stocks in this sector often provide stability and allow for solid growth over an extended period. The demand for consumer staples is relatively inelastic, meaning it remains fairly constant irrespective of price fluctuations or economic cycles. This non-cyclical nature makes the sector less sensitive to macroeconomic factors compared to the other sectors. There are 333 consumer staple companies, or roughly 6% of the market. At the top of the list is Walmart for food and drug retailing. Coca-Cola for beverages and PNG for household products. You also have Nestle and Mondelez, which are large food brands, and Philip Morris from the tobacco industry. No matter the state of the economy, people have to drink, eat, and if they smoke, that too. As mentioned earlier, the sector is known for its low volatility and low correlation with the broader market. This makes it an attractive defensive investment option. Its performance has hung around the middle of the pack for most of the past 15 years. Emerging trends such as the demand for local and healthier goods, as well as environmentally friendly products and packaging, play a crucial role in shaping the sector's investment potential. Companies that can adapt to changing consumer preferences and differentiate their offerings may present attractive investment opportunities. The consumer staple sector often outperforms during periods of economic transition or recession when investors adopt a defensive stance. However, during bullish market conditions, the sector may underperform compared to more cyclical sectors. Investors seeking steady growth, strong dividends and low volatility may find the consumer staple sector appealing for their portfolios. Ninth up is the information technology sector. This is the sector that requires no introduction, as many of the world's most powerful brands have a strong IT core. These companies design, develop, and support computer operating systems, applications, hardware, and related services. You have semiconductor, household electronics, software, and communications companies in this list. Just under a thousand listed companies predominantly operate in this sector. Five of these are in the trillion dollar club, including Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Alphabet, and Meta. You can find most of the world's most valuable companies here in this list. Unsurprisingly, in five of the past 15 years, IT firms have topped the list for their financial performance. In 2024 to date, they topped that list too. The sector has demonstrated strong performance, positioning it well for favorable returns in the coming years. Its profitability and earnings growth outpace the overall market supported by robust cash generation capabilities and low levels of debt. Many tech companies have abundant cash on their balance sheets and are even expanding out into other sectors to disrupt them with technology solutions. Emerging technologies such as AI, cloud computing, and autonomous vehicles offer great investment opportunities. While the pandemic has accelerated the adoption of certain technologies such as remote work, it has also impacted other industries, such as digital payments. Overall, the IT sector's strong fundamentals, diverse investment opportunities, and the potential for disruptive technologies make it an attractive option for investors seeking growth and exposure to cutting-edge innovation. And finally, in 10th spot, we have the telecommunication services industry. This sector includes companies that make communication possible on a global scale, whether through phone, internet, airwaves, cables, or wirelessly. These companies create the infrastructure that allows data to be sent anywhere in the world. Just 77 companies can be found in this industry. Topping the list is T-Mobile, Verizon, Comcast and AT&T. The financial performance of the sector has been scattered over the past 15 years. This year, however, it is second only to the IT industry with returns of 26% year to date. As the world becomes increasingly digital, the demand for robust telecommunication networks is surging. This creates substantial investment opportunities 
opportunities driven by technological advancements, regulatory support, and growing consumer demand. 5G technology and the growth of internet-based devices is increasing the need for seamless connectivity. These firms are at the forefront of providing this essential infrastructure without which many of these other sectors would collapse. As an investor, keep an eye out for regulatory changes, incredibly competitive markets, and the very fast obsolescence of technology as the pace of the change is great. As the world continues to embrace digital transformation, the telecommunications sector is poised for robust growth. This makes it an attractive option for investors seeking long-term gains. If you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure to subscribe down below. It really helps me grow the channel and make more fun content just like this. If you like the look of the Stockopedia software that I've shown in this video, you can click my link down below and get up to 20% off on their annual plans. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.